I'm Dr. Chowdhury and welcome to FSMB Spotlight. Our guest today is Dr. Dan Gifford, immediate past chair of the FSMB. Dr. Gifford is a graduate of the University of Tennessee where he received his undergraduate and medical degrees and where he also completed an internal medicine residency. Uh, he then went on to complete a nephrology fellowship at the University of Alabama in Birmingham and has practiced nephrology and most recently hospitalist medicine. Dan has also been the vice president of the Medical Association of the State of Alabama, MASA, and a member of the Alabama Board of Medical Examiners. Dan, welcome. Thank you, Hank. Dan, when people become chair of the FSMB and they get elected to that position, a lot of them have one signature issue or maybe two, uh, sometimes none, because there are other issues that are going on. When you were chair last year, you had five issues, I, I believe. Uh, so help me understand the rationale behind that. Well, there are a lot of things going on in medicine these days. There are a lot of areas that are changing. Uh, our state medical boards are faced with new problems and new problems are constantly arising. So we want to be ahead of the curve. We want to be prepared for all the new things that are coming about in the field of medicine. So one of them was marijuana, uh, both the medical usage of it and maybe even the recreational use of it. Half the nation, a lot of the states were already looking at that issue. That I'm, so that made sense. And you had Dr. Greg Snyder as the chair of that work group, and they got their work done in a year. Um, you also had the um, opioid issue, uh, which is uh, just finishing now. You had the telemedicine consultation issue yes. under Dr. Ken Simons as chair, and that come finished its work. So tell me about the work groups that are just about to finish up now that you're finishing up your term as well. Well, besides the opioid, it's just now finishing up. We're doing a final draft. We also have uh, an area called team-based regulation. Mm -hmm. uh, more and more physicians and other healthcare providers are working in a team. Uh, and each of these members are regulated by a different board. So we thought it was very important that there be better communication and understanding among these boards as these individuals work in teams, as physicians, nurses, pharmacists. So that is one area that's still undergoing. Another area that's undergoing is medical education um, of medical regulation. So many doctors who are in medical school to be and residents don't understand the licensing process. Mm. The, the areas that are important for them to know and how possibly they could get in trouble with their licensing board. Mm. It doesn't do you very much good to go through medical school and not have a license that you can use to practice medicine. Right. So it's very important that along the way they learn what is important about medical licensure and regulation. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit more about the opioid work group because that's a national epidemic. You had the Surgeon General come to our annual meeting yes, about yes, it. We did. And it's a, it's a problem at every state. Opioids is a growing problem. At one time, opioids were maybe a little underused, but the pendulum has swung to where a lot of opioids are given for chronic pain. There's not a whole lot of evidence for the use of opioids in chronic pain. There is for acute pain. And we find more and more patients having chronic opioid use and not clear guidelines. But recently, the CDC developed some clear guidelines which prompted us and some other state boards to look at the issue again and to better understand how our physicians and our state boards should be looking at the use of chronic opioids. A lot of the policies and guidelines that come out of the work groups and, and the committees that the FSMB have sometimes need to be updated. Uh, some of them, like the telemedicine, maybe even the opioid. Do you see that update being updated or needing to be updated in the next few years? Well, I, I think medicine will change again in a few years. But these work groups have laid a good foundation for future changes that come across in medicine. So we are be better equipped to handle these problems as we are facing them in the future. Very good. Dan, as you finish your term now, you've been on the board how many years? Uh, six years. Six years. Tell me a little bit about what you've learned during those six years representing the, state, the nation's state licensing boards, and what should we be looking out for in the years ahead? Well, I've learned that there are a lot of dedicated men and women who who donate a lot of their time to make sure that medicine is practiced safely in the United States. We have a lot of concerns, a lot of issues, but these men and women who serve on these state medical boards dedicate a lot of time to provide a safe environment for our patients. I am amazed at how much they do and accomplish through their individual state medical boards. I also find that it's very fulfilling for these individuals to see good things happening at the state level. 
state boards don't always get recognized, right, the way no. that they should. Do you see any danger signs ahead in the years ahead? Uh, what should we, we sh they should be looking out for? Well, there's always issues that come up. Individuals and sometimes feel like the medical boards are adversarial in their attempts to regulate and keep the public safe. They're seen as sort of the cop. They're seen as the cop, that's right. But I see these as problems coming forward, but I believe our state medical boards will be equipped to, to face any of those challenges in the future. And it certainly helps that we work with organizations that represent physicians like the AMA, the AOA, That's correct. Council of Medical Specialty Societies as well. Yes, we're integrated with the entire medical community from the beginning of uh, medical school or osteopathic school all the way to practice. And PAs. That's right. And PAs, that's right. Very good. We're out of time, but thank you so much, Dan, for taking time to speak with us, and good luck as you finish your year. Thank you very much, Hank. Thank you for joining us. Stay well, and see you next time.